So guys, this is the Thursday, May 18th, 2023 Zoom. And today we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to have a great start and what to expect and how you should act and things you should do in your first year of your business. Since every single person on this Zoom is in the first year of his or her respective business. But before we do that, um, guys, on Monday, we did an exercise where we um, took the time out of our busy schedule to go over a, uh, a checklist, the, the back to basics checklist. And guys, that back to basics checklist is an incredible tool uh, for us to use uh, to help us really take the, take the temperature, if you will, of our business and take the vital signs and then get feedback and find out exactly what our business needs from us to perform the way that we want it to perform and get the results that we want to get from it. And so I'd like to just pause for a minute. We're just going to kind of go, go left to right across the, across the screen um, and just let everybody just share what are, what are, you know, what were your top three? What we want to do on that guys. I mean, I've heard back scores from people and guys, here's the deal. Most of the scores that I've heard gotten back are in the fifties and the sixties guys. And what, when you get in the 50s or the 60s, when you're in school, if you're on a 10, 10 point grading scale, what kind of grade was that? A B or an F. Yeah, it's a D or an F, right? You know, um, I think in 60s is a D, 70s is a C, 80s is a B, 90s A. Um, so guys, here's the thing is like I shared on Monday is if you if you're if you're if you would like to be greening out on a consistent basis, you like to be selling eagles, but you're selling half of that. If you scored a perfect 100 or something up in the high 90s on that, and you're still not producing at the level you want to, you got a real problem, right? Like maybe sales isn't for you, right? Maybe you have horrible body odor or just a terrible personality, and maybe you brighten a room by leaving it. Of course, I'm kind of being a little bit facetious and funny right now, but if you scored a low score, and I would say 50s and 60s is pretty low, um, then take heart, get excited. You now know exactly the controllable activities that you can put in, that you can raise the bar on. It's your decision, right? You decide that you're going to do that or you decide, or you decide you're not. You either purposefully make good decisions that help your business or you accidentally just kind of do whatever comes natural. And guys, I got a I got news for you. Success is not natural. Success is achieved by the minority of men and women, and it is not to be achieved by following our natural likes and dislikes or natural uh, prejudices. It, it's not. If we do what we feel like doing, that leads to less than optimal results because what we feel like doing a lot of times is staying in bed and hitting the snooze. We feel like not going to the gym, right? We feel like eating sweets and carbs and things like that and not, not the proteins and the vegetables and things that we should. So doing, so it's, it's important to understand that right from the jump is most people in this lifetime will not achieve success. And that's okay. You've got to decide that you are, if that's something that you truly do want to do, and then make the decisions to do hard stuff, things you don't feel like doing. So we all, if, if you followed the uh, instructions, we, we all graded ourselves on a scale of zero to four on about 25 different categories on Monday. And then the, um, you know, what do you do with that information? Okay. If you scored in the fifties and sixties, the reality is you probably scored low on eight, nine, 10 different items. Okay, that's just the facts. Guys, the reality is too, is you're not gonna change eight, nine, 10 different items in a week. Okay, that cause that causes confusion. We have to focus on a couple, two, maybe at the most three things that we're gonna raise the bar on and get better on. And then in two or three weeks, we go back and we take the next next two or three things on that list that can give us our best return on investment and we focus specifically on that so I want to just take a couple minutes this morning and do a little bit of follow through okay because remember guys on our on our uh, vpf what does vpf stand for we do it every week vision plan follow through 
Great guys, vision, plan, and follow through. The vision is we have to have an idea of what we want to accomplish, our vision in our head. The plan is to get it out of our head and onto paper, right? So we can actually have a, a written out plan. And then the follow through is doing what it takes, following through and doing what it takes to achieve that plan. So let's just pause for a minute, guys, and we're, we're all going to go. So don't sit there quiet if you want to eat that frog and get it out of the way early. But we're all just going to go around and share what are the three things that we decided that are the most important for us and for our business that we're going to focus on. And then I'd, I'd really love to hear what action that you've taken between Monday and today. We've had three, three full days now uh, of action time. What are we doing to implement that into our business? So I'll just pause and let whoever wants to go first go and then we'll and then we'll start calling names. I can start. Um, so uh, the the three that I'm focused on, you know, I'm continuing to focus on saying the sales talk word for word. Um, so I am studying that every morning. Um, I've talked to everybody about my schedule. So every morning I read the sales talk from start to finish. Um, and then kind of secondary off of that, I pulled out the transition to close. That is one that I'm just not good at in the field. <laughs> Um, but I nailed it twice yesterday and got two sales yesterday. So, um, so that was exciting, uh, nailing that. And then the last thing, I don't know what number it is, but, uh, getting referrals. So referrals is something that I have struggled with all four weeks. Um, so those are the three that I'm focused on. Awesome. So let's talk word for word referrals in the transition. That's awesome. Very specific. And congratulations on focusing on that, implementing and, and getting results, Matt. That's awesome. It's called growth. All right, hey, Van, we're on here. Oh. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Daisy. You're Go for it, Daisy. Ladies first. Oh, Daisy got so excited she disappeared. Uh, Ron, why don't you go ahead and go? <clears throat> um, Van, so I've been struggling lately, so... Um, I had to take a, a deeper look after I, I went through this list. I had to take a deeper look at exactly what I'm doing wrong, reached out to Zach, got some feedback from him. Um, and with his feedback, I'm just solely focusing on getting my house in order, like me personally, and just reading the sales talk word for word every day, listening to Kyle's uh presentation that he did last week um and just kind of get myself in order because like right now i'm a hot mess and uh kind of figured out talking with zach what i'm doing wrong and talking to you last week thank you for that kind of brought um brought, brought me back into focus on why we do this um and it's a disservice to people and and lately I've just I haven't been doing it the right way and I'm I'm burning a lot of opportunities. So I I've had to take a step back and I'm sitting out the rest of this week to study, to really get myself focused and in order because I'm not I'm not where I'm supposed to be. So um with this uh back to the basics checklist talking with you, talking with Zach, I really had to do a self inventory. So um, I do appreciate it because sales is tough. And, uh, but I like doing it because I like meeting people and I really want to help. So yep. I really had to do a self inventory. Ron, thanks for sharing that, man. I appreciate your, uh, your openness and your rawness right there. Um, I mean, guys, sales is, it is tough. It's tougher, right? If we, if we get off track with just with just the basics sales is a very simple very simple business it's not easy easy and simple aren't necessarily synonymous but it is but it is very simple and when we adhere to those basics and we continually skill up on those basics it gets easier and then and if we don't it, it gets harder so <clears throat> i appreciate that you know i brought up guys with ron that um you know i know at at one point, and this is true with everybody that's been to Sales Academy, at one point you had to pass 
a sales presentation competency review, right? You sat down with your with your trainer and we went through it and made sure that you knew those words, at least 80%. It might not have been perfect going into Sales Academy, but it was trending in that direction. And guys, what happens is somewhere along the way, we go out, um, you know, we've got it down pat. And that's one reason why a lot of people have really good first months is because they're just doing the basics. You got the blinders on, they're doing the basics. Then what happens is they go follow some other people, they hear some advanced sales stuff, and they start implementing other things before they really have a firm understanding of how sales works and why people buy. And they pick up this, they pick up that, they pick up this, they go follow people who have already worked through the three phases of memorizing the presentation, and that's memorize, rote memorization, awkwardness. It should be the first month of your business, the first hundred presentations. Picture perfect, just word for word. Awkward, robotic. You're forgetting your lines. You're going to have to go back and practice. There's, 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 uh, there's times where you just forget what you're going to say in the middle of a prospect. That's that's okay. It's part of it. Then the na- next phase, starting in about week five, is the naturalization phase where you start to get more natural. It's still the words for word sales presentation, but it's just starting to come more natural. You're remembering the next thing. You're starting to have facial expressions and you're not forgetting words that often. That goes on for about your first full quarter in the business. So 13 weeks in, there should be 13 weeks or roughly 500 demonstrations under your belt before you change a word of that presentation. There should be zero personalization before that. Even if you followed someone that's been here for seven years who has gotten to that personalization phase. Okay, you understand you guys aren't on the same playing field. You're not ready for that just yet. Once you got about 500 under your belt and you have a deep understanding of why people buy, then and only then are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you qualified to do any sort of personalization? And it is very important that that personalization be very slight and not change the overall compensation of um, of the sales presentation. So thank you, Ron, for, for sharing that. Anybody else? That's um, um, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dwayne, Dwayne, yeah, come Sorry, guys, I charged my iPad, but not my phone. <laughs> as soon as I was going to talk, it died. Um, Okay, so what I am focusing on um, improving is getting referrals from everyone. I know there's times where and, um, I forget, you know, I'm at the end, we close, and then um, I walk out and I'm like, dang it. So um, that's something that I want to um, ensure that I do every single time. Um, another thing I've been working on that has been working is um, naming 10 plus names during a presentation. Um, you know, now that I'm getting more people that I've, you know, um, just business to business, I'm able to drop those names. And I, I could tell that that has also helped um, with my clothes. And then um, the third one would be to have a to have more of a set stop time. Um, when I get off, I know I was running myself a little thin there working like late night weekends too, which I will still do, but um, just to have a little bit more balance with my work and uh, family life too. So there you go. Yep. Thanks, Daisy. It's hard to follow up on after her. Um, uh, for me, it was basically the same as Ron. I was struggling really bad. Um, I've been focusing on word for word sales talk, um, practicing with Josiah and Damien. Um, transition to close has been big for me because I'm getting the run around by 90% of the people I talk to. Um, and I was talking to you about it last week about, okay, getting that definite yes or definite no, not this. Well, I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks about it. Um, and then the big one is just adhering to my plan for the day, my, whether it be my hours, my my location, when I do my pre-planning, if you, okay, I'm going to stick with this. And it's paid off more because I'm able to be focused with names and everything else. Wayne, thank you much for sh- thank you so much for sharing that, guys. Um, it's it's almost like clockwork. You can tell people that have used the word struggle have also shared that they have kind of they've kind of strayed from the from the sales presentation, and that's a that's a common theme. So, man, keep it simple. You know, keep keep it keep it super simple, as uh, Tim Sakeshnikov would say, and just stick to the words because it works. And even when you get really smart and you can and you feel like you can change it, 
get back, stick with the basics because it definitely works. Plus guys, if you ever want to build a business here with people, um, you got agents that spend two or three weeks learning this presentation. If they come out of sales Academy and follow you and you're not using it, you're sab you're sabotaging that person's career because they're, they're not going to be able to, <laughs> they're not going to be able to do something completely different. So just keeping it simple, it works. Thanks for sharing that Dwayne. Who else guys? All right, Van, I'll go. Um, go ahead, Derek. So really, uh, what I need to work on is doing some more studying, uh, doing my technical work in the evenings. So I'm going to work on putting that in my schedule there. Um, just reading over some of the sales talk again, maybe working on some of the fit modules, um, just a couple different things like that. And <clears throat> I noticed the need to work on some pre-approach you know, maybe for the next business or, or just a couple businesses down in the area. I am doing it a little bit, but not as often as I should. And then I guess the, the easiest part is, uh, that I'm, I'm planning that I'm working on is just having a better set time for start and stop. There you go, guys. Real businesses have schedules, right? Set start times and stop times and they might open early, but they don't open late, right? They might close a little bit late after their, their, their close time, but they don't close early. So always okay to do a little bit more, <clears throat> not, not doing a little bit less. That could, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, Derek for sharing that. That is, uh, that is huge. Great. We've got uh, Matt, Dwayne, Ron, and Daisy, and Derek have gone. We've got Elizabeth, Jeremiah, Rob, and Sarah to go. So uh, for me, uh, biggest thing is the motivation. Um, get, get a little in your head when you got a lot of people that cancel appointments when you schedule them, you work hard to get them, or uh, they procrastinate last minute. So just implementing, putting the stress on the system as far as uh, – fighting through with objection responses, but also um, just moving on to the next one when somebody uh, counsels on you or disrupts your flow. And then for me, uh, with family situations, just random having to go pick kids up from school and stuff like that for being sick or something like that just really throws your rhythm off for the week. Uh, so just trying to game plan on that. Like for instance, manage to squeak out some hours even though uh, Monday and Tuesday were disrupted. Didn't think I would get any hours in. Um, so just being, I guess, life proof. And then um, for the other piece for technical training, getting in the car tomorrow with Maria is going to be a nice refresher. Just having someone to uh, bounce off of, kind of mentor your your profession and your skills. Absolutely, Jeremiah. Thanks for sharing that, guys. Taking that time to sharpen your saw. You know, uh, we've said it a thousand times before. I think it was Abraham Lincoln said, if you give me five hours to chop down a tree, I'll take the first three hours and sharpen my ax, right? Just sharpening those skills. Um, it is so counterintuitive. I can't tell you how many times I've heard rookie agents buck against going to follow. Oh, I can't, I can't afford to take a day out of the field and go and, and go follow because I need to make sales. Well, if the last day, two, three days you've been in the field and you haven't made sales, that means, yeah, you, you, you can't afford to not make sales because you're doing it. So just take the time, step back, recalibrate, develop a skill, go out and you can chop that tree down in the two hours remaining a lot better with a, with a sharp ax than in the full five, five days or five hours uh, with a dull one. So thanks for, for reminding us that, uh, Jeremiah. All right, and then there were three. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, hey, Good morning, guys. Um, so I'm kind of like in the same boat as Matt, um, working on my sales talk because I'm obviously rusty, um, and then focusing on the transition to close too because I feel that's where I'm also kind of get lost, <laughs> and then just getting in those demos, 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 demos. There you go. Six a day keeps the keeps the bill collectors at bay. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Elizabeth. Go ahead, Sarah. Okay. 
So for me, it's uh, work uh, 40 hours a week. That's uh, been hard the past few weeks. Um, and then spend 15 to 30 minutes every morning reading positive, uplifting material for my attitude. And then before finishing today, know exactly where I'm starting tomorrow. There you go. Those are huge, guys. I mean, think about it. Just 40 hours just starting. It's it's hard to get the activity, the demos in without the hours, right? And it's really hard to make sales without the demos. So it all starts with being out in the field, showing up. Well-run businesses show up, open up, make it happen. Positive reading, guys. Doing something positive and saying positive phrases too <clears throat> throughout the day. Remember, guys, the brain defaults to negative. It just does. If you're not purposefully putting something positive in and saying something positive, natural default is to the negative. It's just a, it's just a fact. So um, pur purposefully doing that. And then knowing where you're going to start, that's huge, guys. Driving around looking for that perfect business for the first hour of your day is an absolute waste and it's stressful. Making that decision in advance before you leave the field today, decide which business you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna walk into at 7:30 before the uh, the Zoom the next day, or if you're unable to get out early that particular day that at 8:30 right when that Zoom ends. Save so much mental and emotional energy, guys. Just doing. And at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter if that business is open or if they're there. If you're out of your car and you're walking into that and you're, when you walk up there, you're started. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. Guys, I heard more than one person <clears throat> uh, mention needing work with the transition to the close. And so I'm just going to take one one minute here real quickly and, and role play that for you guys. It is absolutely key. Guys, that before you go, and I hope some people are writing notes down at these and not just, just listening because our brain retains about 8 to 11% of what we hear. It retains 100% of what we write down and study. So put the odds in your favor. Become an excellent note taker, whether it's on Zooms, whether it's on follow days, on conference calls, uh, all of the above. So the transition to close is where you've, you've shown the price and you're now getting ready to go into the close. And it's very important, guys, right there that you gain positive momentum, <clears throat> getting yes answers, get the person. So, you know, I'm going to role play it here with uh, with with Jeremiah and just keep it real simple. But Jeremiah, you know, now that you've seen the entire policy, let me share with you what a few other clients have really liked about this. You see, um, Dwayne and Susie Johnson, what they liked it says here was the, the peace of mind, knowing that this was there to take care of them. Now, what Rob and Marsha um, Jones, what they liked about it was they really liked um, just that that safety net, knowing that something was there to take care of them if something were to happen. Um, and what uh, the Pinnells really liked about it was the return of premium. And knowing they get their, all their money back if some if uh, if nothing happens and they stay healthy. Let me ask you, Jeremiah, what is it about the plan that you like the best? Uh, the peace of mind and knowing that um, the money I invest into it is going to come back to me later on. I mean, it's just kind of logical to have the coverage. Okay. Well, not to sound silly, but what is it about the peace of mind that you like the most? Well, I mean, I could spend my money on the worst things that could happen in my life, or I could spend your money on the worst things that could happen in my life. I think I like the other option better. Okay, that makes sense. Let me ask you this. How would it feel knowing? That's number three, guys. How would it feel knowing? Okay. How would it feel knowing that if something like cancer, stroke, heart attack, injury were to happen, that you'd have that? that financial safety net underneath you to take care of things and pay the bills in your time of need. I mean, it would feel pretty amazing just knowing that I don't have to put that stress on my family or uh, my friends and I don't have to do the next GoFundMe page um, out there um, begging people to be sympathetic of my needs. I just have that, again, that added protection on that. Um, someone with a lot more money than I have can pay for my cancer. Yeah, it really would, wouldn't it? 
Well, you know, one thing that all these folks really love about the way we do business is that the application process is so simple. It's just name, birthday, there's a couple health questions, and that's really about it. It really is nice to have a simple application, isn't it? Yes. And another, another thing people like about it is that, and the, guys, that's, that now this is the close, right? That, that, that was the first question of the actual close. So there's three parts, guys, to that transition to the close, okay? Now that you've seen the entire policy, Here's what so and so like. Here's what a few other folks liked about it. Name three different people and the three things that they like. That's right there on your iPad, right there on your client list, right? And you're reading three different things that they liked about it. You're making it, you're not just saying, hey, what'd you like about it? That's a fill in the blank question. That's difficult. You're giving them three options so they can have a multiple choice quiz instead, right? And they're going to pick one of those things that three things that you said. Usually they're going to choose peace of mind or return a premium. And then you say, hey, what is it about the return of premium? What is it about that peace of mind that you like the most? Guys, them talking and answering those questions, that's the sound of them closing themselves on why they're going to get this. Okay. And then the last question is, how would it feel knowing? Guys, you should have your, how would it feel knowing if something catastrophic were to happen to you or your wife or God forbid one of your kids that you'd have this financial safety net underneath you to take care of things and protect your nest egg? How would that feel? Oh gosh, that would feel great. That would feel nice knowing that. Remember guys, the longer the question, the shorter the answer. Ah, da, 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 da. How would all that feel? It'd feel great. Also remember this, the shorter the question, the longer the answer. So if he gives me a one word answer like great, then I'm going to say, why do you say that? That's a short question, but it's going to draw out of him more. Well, I say it's great because it would just, just knowing that something's there and someone's going to take care of things. Good gosh, it would take such a load off our mind because when my mom went through this or when my grandfather went through this, it was da, 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 da. da. I mean, that's them buying. That is the sound of them buying. So guys, get good at that transition to close. It is absolutely huge. Uh, I'm actually going to share an eagle with you guys from Matt Kirby that specific from years ago uh, that specifically focused in on the transition to close. So guys, it's Thursday morning. Guys, the week is halfway done. Okay. Week's halfway over. Some of us, if you look at our, our goal for the week, we're halfway to our goal. That's awesome. Keep doing what you've been doing. For some of us, we're a little bit ahead of pace. Also, continue doing what you've been doing. And for some of us, we're going to look at it and we're a little bit behind. That's okay. We're always in one of those three camps. If we're a little bit behind, just know that what got us here probably won't get us there. So we might need to make some adjustments and tweak a couple of things. It might be showing up today for eight hours or nine or 10 or whatever it takes. It might be sticking out and getting that last sixth demo. Can't tell you guys how many over five demo over five days turn into one for six days when you just are unconditionally committed to getting that sixth demo. It just, I can't explain exactly why, but six is the number. Um, so guys, make sure that you are unconditionally committed to the controllable activity that it takes to achieve your goal while being completely emotionally detached from the result itself. You do those things and amazing things happen. Guys, thanks for being on. Thanks for investing 35 minutes of your life today to get some uh, get some uh, information and level up and sharpen your saw. And remember, everybody, almost everybody that spoke today talked about getting their sales talk better. So Gina and Chris, you guys right now, you will never have more time in your life than now to memorize that presentation and get it down pat and then stay on track. So utilize this time before Sales Academy. I've never had anybody say, gosh, I wish I'd studied less before Sales Academy. I knew it way too well. No, but you hear the opposite quite a bit. So utilize that time. And guys, if you're in, in the field right now, utilize that 30 minutes every night to continue sharpening your skill and bring it back out of left field when it gets out there sometimes. Bring it back to the basics as the basics work. Thanks for being on, guys. See you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Tell your friends. I think we're going to have Rachel in here tell us about how she sold 20000 on Monday. Uh, and that's something you definitely want to hear about. So have a great day, guys. Thanks, Van. You got it.